Professor Brailsford. Mm. We are doing our series on um, the most important thing in computer science or uh, something that, you know, you couldn't do without. What have you got for us then today? Well, I think my most important thing, we're going to sort of share this discussion, uh, Steve Bagley and I, because I think we're very much agreed that one of the most powerful concepts, constructs in computer science is just the idea of a pointer. One of the uses of pointers that's easiest to understand is in linked lists. We're going to use Lego to illustrate linked lists. I know that some of you are demon programmers and could take it if I just ran through a program with you, but I think a lot of you who are beginners perhaps might appreciate having a more pictorial introduction to uh, linked lists. So, at great mental expense, Sean and I have developed a Lego model of the linked lists we want to talk about. And we'll gradually introduce the elements of this as we go along. But the first thing to say is that pointers are pieces of, I don't know what they are in Lego, fireman's hoses or connectors or whatever they're called, that is a pointer of some sort. In order to bring this home and make it more concrete, I've got to say, well, what are we linking together? And once again, I mean, this has been referred to in Brian Kernighan's thing about associative arrays. He pointed off to singly linked lists and each of the elements within in the singly linked lists contained a string. What I'm going to start with is basically a piece of Lego underneath a small section of C coding. I'm going to go through this very carefully and those of you who aren't demon programmers don't get panicked about it. I'll try and go very slowly and explain to you what's happening. This is what I am going to call a thing. Whenever you look later on and say what is that grey base plate doing? What does it signify? Grey base plate means it's a thing. What are the components of a thing? Well, a red box sitting on top of the thing holds a string of characters. And again, we're going to follow up with the idea of things you might buy for a barbecue, burgers, uh, chips, uh, wine, stuff like that. But because it's a singly linked list, the other box sitting within the structure is going to point off to the next thing along in this singly linked list. If that's a thing then, the only bit of programming I'm going to do today, honest, this is it, is to just show you how this would be declared in the C language. I'm using a type def declaration because I just want to be able to use the shorthand of thing. A bit like int, instead of saying int Sean semicolon, Sean is an integer and can have context, I just want to be able to say thing Sean. But in order to be able to make that abbreviation and to cut the clutter a lot, I have to give what's called a type def, a definition of what a structure of type thing really is. And all it's saying in here, if you look at it, is char star item. Now, what that is saying, this is, again, those of you familiar with C will know, it's a standard C way of saying it's a pointer to a char, apparently. But actually, they cheat a bit because it's not just a pointer to a single character, it can be a pointer to a great long string of characters. Does char mean character, though? Char is short for character, yes. Some people call it car, some people call it char, but it's basically, if you point at the first character in a string, then you've pointed at the whole thing because you just step along it sequentially. And here, for the blue box in my model, I've got to say, well, how do I point at the next thing along in my list? Well, I hope you can see there's a sort of bit of recursion in the definition here, but the compiler knows you can do things like this and doesn't panic. You've got a struct underscore thing inside here, referring back to this struct underscore thing. What it's saying is that this thing I'm calling next within the structure is a pointer to the next thing. So what are these things known as then, this item and next? They're called members in C. Next is also a member. In other languages you'll find these internal identifiers, if you like, within a structure called different things. I mean, in Algol 68, where I started, they were called fields of the structure. Those are just so that you can pick out the components of your structure. And remember, the overall package 
of a pointer to the next one, a red box which means I can contain a string of arbitrary size, mount the whole thing up on a piece of grey Lego and the whole thing is a thing. We've got the basic building block then of what we need to start building together linked lists. Now some of you are going to say hey come on you're glossing over actuality because obviously this next member field is going to have a pointer in it to the next one of these things but you haven't said that inside the string box you can't just put a string inside an address box it might not be big enough to hold supercalifragilisticexpialidocious yeah quite right those of you in the know will know that within this box that contains a string you will have well it says so here you must Create yourself enough space to hold the string and point at it. We draw a veil over that for the moment. Just imagine that it doesn't matter what the string is, burgers, zucchini, whatever, we can create enough space in the red box to hold that string, make it identifiable. I'm going to put out the code for this program and any subsequent ones in the usual way available to you in, in C. I'll try and get my indentation so it doesn't make those of you who care passionately about these things Mind you, there'll be, there'll be indentation wars. Some people will love the way I've done it and other people will hate it, but we'll live with that. But yes, the idea of this, going through this model, purely with Lego, is that if you then get hold of the program, look back at the video, try and follow all the things I'm doing and say, well, how does the program do that? And see if you can understand as we go along. I wish in many ways I'd thought about trying to do this when I was teaching uh, linked list to third year undergrads, I think it might have helped some of them who are very pictorial in the way they want to look at things. Once we've declared at the top of our C program that this whole thing is called a thing, I can then say later on in the program if I wanted to, thing, Sean. Just like saying int, Sean, but this is a thing. Okay, we haven't filled in your likes and dislikes, Sean. Um, what's your favourite stuff at barbecue? Uh, Sausage. Sausages. Sausages. So that of course is the barbecue item that Sean likes best. Now if I've named my thing, which I have and given it an identifier name, I can say things like Sean.item equals quotes sausages. And that works fine because if you give an explicit string of characters in C, it will at compile time find the space to hold that for you. So that should work okay. And there's also no prizes for guessing that perhaps for cleanliness I ought to fill in what the next field of Sean is. And there is a standard way of saying it's the zero pointer, it points nowhere, it's called nil, it's called null. Not been filled in yet but you've got to fill it in with something so you fill it in with null. A stage beyond that is to say thing star p. Now if you're happy that star item within the structure means pointed to a string of characters, then it follows that the type of P is pointer to thing. So I haven't filled anything in here yet. Um, this contains nothing, this box, but I could overwrite it with a pointer to Sean if I wanted to do that. Okay? So we will be developing quite a lot the idea that we don't necessarily deal always directly with things. We stand back one level and we use pointers to things. It makes good sense because within the list of structures we're developing, as you know, the next field is of type pointer to a thing. I guess at this stage, perhaps to make this a bit more concrete, we could turn our attention now over to the Lego. And in that infuriating way that they do on home help, do-it-yourself programs on TV, I'm going to say, here's one I've prepared already. The idea in this particular linked list of barbecue items is that there are strings inside each of these red boxes, as we've discussed, and these strings of characters correspond to things you might want on a barbecue. But we are so neat and tidy, we want to keep these in alphabetical order. So look at this. The string content in that red box says beer, Chips, pizza, slaw, 
wine. So don't forget, these are the contents of the boxes. The member name of each box is all the same. It's always the item part of the particular thing you're on at the moment. And the pointer here is the next part of that box. But it's all beautifully set up, look. Every one of your next boxes really does point to the start address of the next thing all the way down. They're all in alphabetical order. But the one aspect we didn't mention, which is vital, is that you must set up a pointer to the head of the linked list. If you don't have that, you can't reference anything. What we're saying here is it's not part of linked list processing in general to give each of these uh, thing structures its own name. I mean, you know, I could call them Sean, Dave, Steve, Mike and uh, Robert or something like that. But no, life's too short, I'd run out of names. No, keep them all in order, but just retain one pointer that tells you what is the lead item in there. So this start pointer, look at the colour coding, it's blue, so it's a thing star or as we used to say in Algo 68, a reference to a thing. You jump onto the pointer and you're the start address of a thing. And inside that, you can say, give me the item, give me the next, and so on. But the big question now is, it's all beautiful, but suppose, actually, I was told to get some burgers, but they didn't have them available at the first supermarket I went in. So I had to go somewhere else and get some burgers. And unfortunately, Brian or Sean has made this list up already, so determinedly keeping it alphabetic, if I prepare over here a new thing with burgers ready to be put in, how do I traverse down this list, find out where it belongs alphabetically, and get it to work so that I can fiddle with the pointers and link it in? Quick check will show you that burgers belongs after beer but before chips. Therefore what you need is a probe to look inside each of these structures and to tell you what is inside there in terms of the item field. Now I can't use start as the probe. If I move that away from the head of the list I'm sunk. I'll never find that wretched list ever again. You mustn't use start as your roving pointer. But what I can do just like the thing called P I developed. Let's call this P for the pointer. If I, first of all, copy over the contents of start into P, which is also of type reference to thing, then I th hope you'll all agree that what will happen is I've now got this thing called P is pointing at exactly the same structure at the head of the list as start is. So hope I've got enough finger power here to do it. There you go. You start with P up here and you say, what's the item within that thing I'm pointing at? And the answer is beer. So burgers goes after beer. Then move that from there to there and use it as a probe to ask, what is the item entry in that one? Chips. Ah, it needs to be earlier than chips. So you can see here, you've got a bit of a problem with a singly linked list. If you move the pointer too far, you end up with chips, but you say, ah, but I want to insert it before chips, but after beer. I want to be back at this address. So what I'm saying is, it's perfectly possible to do it. You've got to be very careful. You've got to come in, you've got to say that one's beer. Then you've very carefully got to take a look at this next field and say, should I follow that pointer and see what's in the next red box? You can do that, it's fine, but be so careful that it doesn't contain nil, no. It could be a very short list. It could be that there's only one item in it. And right down the bottom here, this thing that looks like something from Angry Birds denotes null. And if you start trying to follow the null pointer, your program will go bang and say segmentation violation. Well, that's fine, but it needs some careful programming, but it can be done. And I will give you a solution that does it just that way. Next thing you've got to sort of say to yourself though, is when I found where I want to be, how do I bind in the new thing? Well, the actual construction process, if you like, of putting in the new thing, once you've discovered that burgers needs to go in here somewhere, is to do this. You've got to, well, use an extra long pointer here, which points to our new 
the created thing and we are then going to take the old pointer that was in there and put it as going from here to here. So look, we've done it. We go beer, follow the pointer to a thing that's got burgers. Let's move that out of the way. Follow the pointer to a thing that's called chips. So we've inserted burgers. So it's just pointer manipulation once you've discovered where you are. What you need in this, and it's really <laughs> frustrating, you need to keep your finger in two places, or you need two fingers, let's put it that way. You want to remember the one you've just looked at, you want to take a look at the next one and say, yes, it's in between those two. We've done it, we patched in our new thing for burgers. So let me just sort of summarise some of the problems then. Obsessively keep checking for nil, obsessively. If you dereference that, bang, you're dead. And that brings into question certain special cases. What happens if I want to insert something at the end of a list where nil is parked there already? I've got to be very careful there. Well, suppose I wanted to put zucchini or something in at the bottom, below wine. That might be a problem. Even worse problem potentially might be if I wanted to put something in at the head of the list, ahead of what's there already. I mean, under those circumstances, what you'd be saying is something beginning with A, Sean, avocado, to make guacamole with. If we wanted to put avocado here, then what you would have to do is create a new thing there and move that to point at avocado and then make avocado's link point at that one. There you go. So this is avocado. That would be the start of your list now. And you'd have an internal one to complete it going from here to here. Now here is a big problem, because you'd better get this right. Because notice you have actually altered start. What I was saying all along was be careful of start. It's your pointer to the head of the list. But if you get something like avocados that has to be the new head of the list, then you must make sure that the start pointer gets updated. Another special case that's got to be put in your code. So be obsessive about checking for nil. Can you cope with things inserted at the head of very start of the list? Nicely. Can you cope with putting zucchini at the end? Is it all nice and clean? You'll see in the solution I give you that there has to be a lot of special case checking to get all of this right. But on the, on the other hand, you can make it work, um, but you will, in general, need some sort of roving pointer or pointers moving down the list to check what you're pointing at and what the next one is. Now, if you look at that code and say, oh, it's yucky, it's horrible, can't you do any better than that? It's not easy. However, there is a top secret trick which actually makes it so much easier to do that. It'll have to be a separate video. Sorry to leave with cliffhangers, folks, but it's uh, becoming almost a computer file tradition now, isn't it? So what would make life a lot easier is instead of just having start, I mean, we, we can't do away with it, but we've got it. But, you know, it's a blue thing. It points to a, a structure type thing. Is if we introduce the concept of a pointer to a pointer to a thing. And this is what a green box signifies. I've got an extra long linkage here. And I'm going to put that on there. So I hope you're all happy because this is really doing type theory, elementary type theory, theory in a way that would make my functional colleagues blench. But I'll try not to say anything too obviously untrue. You'll have to agree with me that if the contents of a blue box is a reference to a thing, then if you step one beyond it, you're referring to a ref thing or a thing star or whatever. So the contents of the green box would be a ref ref thing or in C notation, a thing star star. Assembly programmers among you will say, oh, come on, this is just type safe nonsense. They're all pointers. Just mess about with them. Do what you want with them and don't make any mistakes. Now, what I like about C is it's a nice halfway house. It gives you a bit of type safe capability. It does distinguish between a pointer to a thing and a pointer to a pointer to a thing and makes you very carefully get the level of your pointing correct. 
But what can be revealed in the future is that that simple trick of this thing containing a pointer to a pointer can solve a huge number of problems. Here is the definition, or one possible definition, of rec in the lambda calculus. And this is what's known as the Y combinator. And if you look at this, I mean, it looks like a jumble of symbols, but it's actually very similar to loop. If we look back to see the definition of loop...